Hello and thanks for checking out this latest video forecast from Convecta Weather. I'm forecast Nathan Kitchens here with you. Hope you all are doing great on this Monday. It's August 17, 2015. Let's take a brief look at the current weather conditions across the lower 48. We have plenty of heat and um, continuation of a fire risk across the west. It's been obviously um, talked about how active of a fire season it has been across the western portion of the United States with the ongoing drought and obviously the conditions, uh, the hot weather not helping at all and the low humidity as well along with those high winds. Let's take a look. We have red flag warnings here across portions of southern, uh, southern Idaho and extending down towards portions of southern Wyoming and the parts of northwest Colorado as well. The orange here across portions of western Oregon and into parts of far southwest Washington here. That's a um, heat advisory. We have very hot temperatures across this area for today. And across the middle section of the country here, you don't see a whole lot of alerts. Um, you see a couple flood advisories here, but we actually have some pretty active weather across the central part of the country. And that's really going to be the highlight of the weather over the next few days. We're going to be watching a storm system cyclogenesis. We have a storm system um, developing um, across uh, portions of southeast Colorado, low pressure developing, and that slow pressure will continue to deepen and um, become stronger over the next couple of days. And we're going to see the risk for severe storms shifting eastward throughout the center part of the country, extending up from today throughout the day on Wednesday as well. So the next few days, we're going to continue to see the, the chance for some severe storms across portions of the midsection of the country. And across the northeast, it's pretty quiet right now. It's hot and quite humid as well. We have very warm temperatures. In fact, temperatures will continue to hover around 90 degrees across portions of Vermont, New Hampshire, um, into the middle part of the week. So staying pretty hot. Eventually, your temperatures will get back closer to average as we head throughout the rest of the week. Um, but again, staying pretty warm across portions of New England. And let's take, I'm going to throw on the radar here to just show you what's going on right now on this Monday afternoon. We have a pretty active map here. Again, you probably can't see this very well. I'll, I'll um, make this bigger here and we have numerous showers and storms across portions of the Ohio Valley um, we have a moist southerly flow extending northward continuing to pump in that warm moist air you get the daytime heating and boom you get those showers and storms that develop and in fact here where I am in central Indiana um, we at least a little while ago we had a pretty good storm in through we had quite a bit of thunder um, Again, we still have showers and storms across the area here, across portions of um, southwest Indiana, extending up through the central part of the state. Certainly the metro area across Indianapolis, the Indy metro, getting in on some showers and storms on this Monday afternoon. That will certainly slow you down out there on the road. Some torrential downpours of rain, um, for one, can cause ponding on the roadways and um, certainly will slow down the traffic out there. And just a pretty active map. Look at the numerous showers and storms. Again, we have all that warm, moist air coming right out of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, Montgomery, Alabama, you guys certainly saw a pretty good hit with showers and storms a little while ago. The worst of it is now pushed northward, just north of you in Montgomery, and uh, pushing towards, uh, say, Birmingham. And Atlanta Metro, pretty quiet right now, but eventually you guys will get in on some showers and storms. Um, again, um, your beds have staying dry. Your uh, time is probably running out as the shower storms they continue to they continue to bubble up and become more numerous throughout the rest of the afternoon and into the evening. And also, we're watching a we have basically a boundary, a stationary frontal a frontal boundary right throughout here, and that's basically adding um, it's a um, certainly a lifting mechanism for the showers and storms to get, to uh, continue to develop, um, especially when you throw in that daytime uh, heating. And we're watching portions of uh, Colorado today, uh, New Mexico, portions of Kansas, um, portions of Wyoming, Nebraska. We're going to be watching um, the potential for some severe storms to develop across this region. As we head throughout the course of this Monday afternoon and throughout Monday evening, we have um, area of low pressure. We're going to see what we call cyclogenesis. We're going to see an area of low pressure to um, that we expect to develop and continue to um, strengthen. Uh, again, that low pressure will provide spin in the atmosphere for um, potential for some tornadoes. Um, damaging winds will be a threat and large hail will be a concern as well. Again, um, certainly a few tornadoes can run out, but really we're going to be watching the damaging wind and hail risk as well. But again, all three um, all three things there um, are certainly on the table as far as the risks are concerned for today. So definitely keep that in mind. And 
as we head farther to the west here, I don't want to leave you guys out. I don't want to leave anybody out here across the lower 48. We have some showers across portions of Montana, a few thunderstorms in here as well. And again, pretty quiet here across the Pacific Northwest. Again, the heat's the big story here. I showed you that these areas are under a heat advisory, and we have that red flag warning across southern Idaho and southwest Wyoming where we have low humidity and very warm temperatures and some pretty good winds, all contributing to that threat for wildfires throughout the day today. Let's take a look at the surface map um, from the NOAA Weather Prediction Center here. I'm looking at their short range forecast right here. And again, I already showed you the radar. We have this, this frontal boundary basically draped throughout the center part of the country, extending from uh, portions of Canada down through portions of um, the Great Lakes and down through the center part of the country. We have this air low pressure that uh, will be developing and continuing to strengthen as we hand throughout. Don't you love when things pop up on your computer? <laughs> but anyway, we have this area of low pressure that will be continuing to develop as we head throughout the course of the afternoon. And this will provide the risk for some showers and storms and severe storms heading into the late afternoon and evening hours. Looking at the severe weather risk for today from the NOAA Storm Prediction Center, if I can get to it here, and here we go. Here is the outlook for today. Again, we have a slight risk of severe storms extending from uh, portions of the central and high plains here, Wyoming, eastern parts of Wyoming, um, southwest parts of Nebraska, western parts of Kansas, far northeast New Mexico, and just a little sliver here of western Oklahoma, and again, much of the eastern half of Colorado. Denver, Colorado, we're watching you very closely for the, that potential. You guys are pretty much in the zone right in the um, heart of the severe weather threat for today. And again, here's a look at the tornado threat. We have that low pressure developing. That's going to be that spin in the atmosphere. We cannot roll out a few tornadoes this evening, late this afternoon and this evening across this area. The Storm Prediction Center is going with a 5% risk uh, for tornadoes across this area in red. 2% indicated by that um, green shading. And we look at the wind potential. Um, certainly the threat is there for damaging winds. We have that 15% um, probability in the yellow. And hail. Here's a look at our hail probabilities for this afternoon and this evening, courtesy of the Storm Prediction Center. We have a 15% risk. It, we have this black hatched area here. Nest, this is where basically we see the greatest potential for large hail uh, to uh, occur throughout this afternoon and this evening. So definitely want to keep that in mind across this area. Again, you guys are used to having large hail um, when, you, when it comes to severe weather situations, but just want to keep this in mind. Um, large hail will be a threat. You definitely want to Keep an eye on the weather and make sure you get that car in the garage when necessary um, later this afternoon and this evening. So let's go ahead and look at basically what we're going to be dealing with over the next few days. We have that area of low pressure that will be uh, developing throughout the evening hours or continuing to strengthen throughout the evening hours. And basically we'll be lifting off um, to the northeast as we have throughout the next couple of days. So let's advance forward here in the GFS computer model. There's that low pressure. Um, as we head into the day on Tuesday, watch how it continues to strengthen a little bit. It went from 100, 1,000 and 6 mil, 1,004 millibars here um, to 1,002 millibars. So it's slowly strengthening as we as we head throughout the course of Tuesday afternoon. And numerous showers and storms possible. The severe risk tomorrow will be shifting eastward. Let me show you that severe weather risk for Tuesday, um, August 18th here. And I think I posted it here. Here we go. I apologize for not showing these on my PowerPoint. My PowerPoint's currently down, so I, um, I haven't posted these maps on my PowerPoint. But anyway, I'll show you this here. Um, the Storm Prediction Center outlook for Tuesday. We have a slight risk of severe storms, really across the heartland um, center of the country, from southwest uh, Wisconsin through much of Iowa, the northwest half of Missouri, the eastern half of Kansas, and portions of northern Oklahoma. This will be the threat area on Tuesday. We're watching for the potential of some damaging winds and large hail. And, of course, can ever rule out the potential for an isolated tornado. This system will continue to push northward. This area of low pressure continuing to strengthen by, um, this is the map by Tuesday evening. The GFS is depicting this will be now a 998 millibar low. So as that pressure continues to drop, it indicates that the system is continuing to become stronger. It's a deepening area of low pressure. And heading into Tuesday night. In the Wednesday, the slow pressure is lifting off to the northeast by Wednesday morning. It's now a 992 millibar low, courtesy of the G, or excuse me, according to the GFS computer model. Obviously, 
we can look at various models as well. Let's go head to the um, Canadian model just to see what it's showing at the same time. Um, this would be 12Z Wednesday morning. Looking at the Canadian model, very similar, just a um, touch um, stronger, 991 millibar low here, but pretty much the same idea, same story here on a Canadian model. And going back to the GFS model for Wednesday, the severe weather threat will be shifting off to the east. Again, it's today it's across portions of the central and high plains. By tomorrow, it's shifting towards the central plains. And by Wednesday, the severe weather threat shifts towards portions of the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley. As this area of low pressure continues to lift off to the northeast, by Wednesday evening, this low pressure is now into parts of, it's near Lake Superior here, according to the GFS computer model. And we're going to have this cold front, this front, extending down. We have the, the jet stream, that trough, um, certainly going to be moving through. The presence of the jet stream, those upper-level winds, will help support the potential for some damaging winds uh, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, or during the day Wednesday with these storms as they, as they continue to push eastward along uh, out ahead of this cold front. And as we head into, um, as I look at the storm prediction center outlook for Wednesday, um, we have a slight risk of severe storms, again, farther east now, part, across a good part of Michigan, down through all of Indiana, portions of southeast Illinois, really the southeast half of the state of Illinois, and portions of southeast Missouri, under that threat for severe storms on, um, on Wednesday. And as we head into Wednesday, Wednesday evening, we're going to see this area of low pressure continuing to lift off now into parts of Canada. This front will shift off to the east. And heading into Thursday, the Ohio Valley will finally begin to catch a break from those showers and storms. We're going to see much quieter weather across the Midwest, uh, lower humidity settling in behind this front, and much more pleasant conditions as well. Um, heading into Thursday and Friday, this is by um, Thursday night, heading into early Friday morning, that front's pushing much farther to the east. We're now talking parts of New England, getting in on that shower and thunderstorm risk, and that's, this whole system will continue to push eastward, heading into today on Friday. I also want to show you the, the rainfall potential over the next few days, because we are going to see some pretty good amounts of rain across a pretty large area of the country, um, showing you the, the, this is from the Weather Prediction Center, the Quantitative uh, Precipitation Forecast. Uh, the Weather Prediction Center is a branch of NOAA, uh, just showing you the potential for rain. This will be from this evening, um, Monday evening, all the way through early, um, or excuse me, all the way through Thursday evening. Um, and this is a look at how much rain could fall. Um, this is a quantitative precipitation forecast. We're seeing um, pretty good amounts of rain along this low pressure track here. Um, anywhere from one to three, we could see over three inches of rain across portions of Iowa and Minnesota uh, throughout the day on Tuesday. That will be into Wednesday. That will be your main time that you, you pick up all that rain. And as the system continues to push eastward, as we head into Wednesday and even into Thursday, we continue to add on to this um, rainfall amount. A good swath here of the, Ohio, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, the Mid-South. Um, good one to two inches of rain. You can see we're emphasizing the Mid-South here where we could see two to three inches of rain um, throughout the next several days. You're obviously getting in on that convection today, but again, that system um, for the middle of the week will, will contribute to more rain for you guys. And this rain continues to shift off to the east, heading into Thursday. And at this point, by Thursday evening, you can see the parts of New England have not picked up a whole lot of rain, but you guys will uh, get on that rain by Thursday night into Friday, because I'm going to expand here and show you the day four through five rainfall potential on that system pushes eastward. Finally, parts of New England, you guys will get it on, on the rain by Thursday evening into Friday morning here. We could see as much as an inch or so of rain across these areas here um, later on this week with the Ohio. This is through days four through five, so I'm talking about the time period from Thursday through Saturday morning. Um, Midwest catching an overall break in the action here. Um, and heading into this weekend, we're going to see our next system coming in from the west, so that we're, we're going to be watching parts of the, the midsection of the country, the Midwest, and the middle, um, the upper plains, getting in on that threat for some more rain and some shower and thunderstorm activity as we head into the day on Saturday and into Sunday. We're going to watch our next system developing here across the upper Midwest. And I'll show you this. How we'll take a look at how the surface. We'll take a look at the surface map for um, later on this week. If I can get to it here from the Weather Prediction Center. Um, 
think I had it up here, okay. Um, this is the map by um, Friday morning. You can see that area of low pressure that was once down here has shifted off to the northeast. Now in the parts of central around the Hudson Bay here in Canada, we have the cold front continuing to push off to the east. Um, surface high here uh, behind the front across portions of the Ohio Valley and even into the mid-Atlantic. This will provide some very nice weather for you guys by the end of the week looking at some pretty nice weather here. And um, that cold front continues to shift off to the east. Friday and into Saturday, that front by Saturday morning is right along the coast here of New England. And we're all going to, by Saturday morning, we're already watching our next system developing here across the Midwest. This is going to provide a renewed threat for some showers and storms throughout today on Saturday across the Midwest. And into Sunday, this system shifts farther to the east. So now we'll be watching parts of say um, potentially even in the parts of the Ohio Valley getting on some showers and storms potentially as we head towards the end part of the weekend. So we're going to be looking at basically the system pushing through throughout the middle of the week. The Midwest will catch a nice break um, later on this week and then we'll watch our next system coming in by the weekend. Okay so let's take a look now at I'm going to talk about the Atlantic um, we obviously look at tropical activity in the Atlantic, I should say. We've had a very quiet um, uh, season so far across the Atlantic, courtesy of what we have currently going on in the El Nino, um, altering the atmospheric circulation. We have a stronger than average upper level winds. Um, that, that shear basically can tear apart and kill a system from really organizing and developing into a full blown system. But right now, uh, of interest, we have a wave, a disturbance that has pushed off the west coast of um, Western Africa, and we're watching this here. It's at about, oh, let's say about 35 degrees west longitude here. Um, for the next couple of days, the National Hurricane Center has put out a 50% chance of development, but within the next five days, we have a 70% chance of this system developing into a tropical storm. And so we have a pretty high chance, actually, of a tropical system here in the Atlantic. And if this does indeed form into a tropical storm, it will get the name Danny. So it will be interest, interesting to see how this can evolve over, over the next few days. And how these, we're also going to have inhibiting factors um, that will affect the system. We're going to have the system, it's um, right now, we don't have a whole lot of shear where the system is developing right now. But the system looks to be heading towards some stronger up-level winds. That can kill the system. So we'll certainly be watching how this can evolve over the next few, over the next few days. If um, We'll see if the system can develop into a tropical system. So the Atlantic season has been very, very quiet. It continues to be pretty quiet. But we're going to watch the system to see if we can get a tropical storm to develop over the next few days. Well, that is about all I have. For this video forecast. I hope I covered everything as far as the severe weather chances for um, your area over the next several days throughout the week. Um, thanks for watching. Um, keep it here to convective weather um, for um, up continuing, um, continuing updated weather information. Hope you have a great week. Thanks for watching.